Hey, good to have you here. I'm going to let you in on a fantastic solution using normal maps for keeping that high poly detail on your mesh for use in games, large renders, and applications where performance is crucial. This is important for when the multi-resolution modifier is not an option. For example, here I will go over how you can do this using Unity, and we'll start with the antler mesh I used in the multi-resolution video linked in the description. Now take a look at these two planes. Can you spot the difference between which one has the normal map and which one has all the geometry? The concept here utilizes a normal map to alter the behavior of the light to fake additional geometry. For flat surfaces like planes, it isn't incredibly impressive. So let me show you what it does to my antler model. It's pretty cool. Okay, I have my antler model ready to go, and it has the multi-resolution modifier on it. Let's make a copy of the antler, and I'm going to use it for comparison later on. Now my antler here has a bit of a flaw in its base mesh. At level of viewport zero, the mumps are a little too pointy near the base. So I'm going to show you a trick on how you can partially apply the multi-resolution modifier to add a little more geometry to work with. Now this step's optional, but it is useful to know. To partially apply the multi res modifier, you're going to need to make a copy of the mesh. This one I'm going to name subdivided. I'm going to turn the level viewport down to one. This is the level I want to apply. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And now I'm going to add a subdivision surface and we'll add a shrink wrap as well. Go ahead and use the eyedropper tool to select the original mesh behind. And we're going to set the level viewport to three. Now we'll apply both the subdivision modifier and the shrink wrap. This will create identical geometry to the mesh behind. Now we'll add the multi-res modifier and we'll unsubdivide it three times. There we have at level zero, our new base mesh that looks pretty good. Now we'll go to the UV editing tab and we'll do a smart UV project. This will create a UV map that we can use to generate our normal maps from. Now I'm going through and I'm checking all these vertices. Any that are really close together might not work so well. I'm mainly looking for any of the vertices that might be overlapping. We'll go back to layout. And here we're going to go into the render properties. We'll need to be in cycles and go down to bake and we'll do bake from multi-res. Now if you hit bake, it'll come up with an error. And the reason for this is we don't have an active texture to bake to. So let's go ahead and create that. We'll go to our shader editor and I'll just start from scratch. We'll add a principled shader and let's add an image texture. I'm gonna rename this to normal map and we'll set the resolution width to 4096 and the height, same thing, 4096. You'll want it big enough because this will be the resolution for the normal map. Now when we hit bake, and I'm gonna do a vertical split. And let's go into the UV editor and we'll click down to our normal map that was generated and you'll see it looks rather questionable. There's a lot of gritty patterns here and I'm gonna select shade smooth. Now let's connect up this normal map and see what it looks like. So we'll add a normal map node. We'll connect the color to the color of the normal map, connect the normal to the normal in the principled shader and there it will appear on our object. But this doesn't look right at all. Now this is an issue that you might run into. So let me show you how to fix this. Let's go into our modifier properties and in shape, we're actually going to apply the base. Now let's bake again and there we go. That looks a lot better, but you see there's still some weird white patches here. Now I can't believe this tripped me up in the recording. I did not know how to solve this problem of these white patches showing up on the mesh. So here's me struggling to try to figure out for probably a good 45 minutes going through going through Google search upon Google search. Yeah, it was really annoying, but actually all you needed to do was go back to the UV, we'll do save as, and then make sure that this color space is set to non-color. And there we go. So the reason for this is if you do sRGB, it will automatically adjust the gamma, and this is what throws it off. So you'll want to select non-color, that way it doesn't automatically correct for anything. We want the pure values, and there we get our detail perfectly on the antler. That looks pretty nice. And notice we're on level viewport zero here on the multi-res modifier. Let's export this to FBX. And we're just gonna do for the selected objects, I don't wanna export everything. And now let's hop into Unity. Now I'll import a new asset, navigate to the antler model we created, nice. And you'll see that the normal map isn't applied yet. So let's go ahead and import the normal map. So we're gonna right click again, import new asset, and we'll click the normal map, import that. It'll automatically start applying to the object probably, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create a material that way everything's packaged all nicely. Right click, create material, and I'll just rename this antler material. And I'll just drag and drop this into the normal map, and then we'll drag the newly created material and we'll just drop it on there. Now we can add more modifiers to this material. Pretty cool. I love how this turned out because you can't really see that most of it is really flat. 
all those details are just being faked, <laughs> but they look good. And this will be optimized for games and renders where performance is crucial. It's very important to understand that this solution may not work for your use case. For instance, when you're doing really close up shots or you want to really highlight the detail of a shot, it may be worth going and creating that additional geometry so that you get nicely placed shadows. And while there is other ways to continue optimizing this solution, for instance, adding a bump map, adding a displacement, nothing truly beats geometry. So keep that in mind as you're working through your process and go and create something awesome. Thanks guys.